Hello everyone, welcome to Indie Year, the channel where we make sure that this is your year for making your independent video games. Today we are going to begin a series of tutorials on how to make a Mega Man Battle Network type game for Unity 3D. Let me introduce you to the Mega Man Battle Network series and its awesome battle mechanics. Mega Man Battle Network, known in Japan as Rockman.exe, is one of Capcom's Mega Man series and debuted in 2001 on the Game Boy Advance. It is a real-time tactical RPG spin-off series based on the original Mega Man series taking place in a separate continuity where computer and networking technology advance instead of robotics. There are six main Mega Man Battle Network games as well as several side story games. We're going to be using Unity 3D to mimic some of the qualities from the video game. Our core focus on getting this project done will be on the movement mechanics and the attacking mechanics. From there, you personally can decide what other mechanics you want to place in your Mega Man Battle Network type game. Note that we are developing this game for Android to mimic the portability of the Game Boy Advance. This means that we will not be focusing on creating virtual buttons due to their limitations when it comes to gaming. However, there are tutorials linked in the description that will take you to adding virtual buttons for your game. We have a smash ball. Oh, have the first one. Of those in a while. Yes, the first one so far in the smash. 35 seconds left. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it, people? Mega Man! Mega Man! The Super Fighting Robot! Oh, 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 he got one, he got one! The Super Fighting Robot! Mega Man! The Super Fighting Robot! Mega Man! Super Fighting Robot! Mega Man! 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 The series features a 6x3 grid on the battle screens. Today, we will set up that 6x3 grid, mimic Mega Man Battle Network's movement on that 6x3 grid, and trigger animations to occur during that movement. All assets are located below. by making sure that we have everything set up properly. And the way that we do this is we go into our assets folder and we begin placing some folders in here. Next we have our regular scene here. And we're gonna start off with a, just place directly in the center. So we have our red cube. Now we are going to want our character to be on a flat surface. So for instance, we could just quickly create a plane. So let's do that. All of these should be zeroed out. Maybe it did it because it's going on top of the cube, which it didn't have to. I guess the cube was kind of in the way. Um, so maybe we should have made the plane first. And the plane just kind of sort of helps us see the grid a little better. Um, but also it helps us make sure that we're on um, a surface. So let's change the name player. From here we can begin to set up the other cubes that we will use. So first we'll create a cube. Next we'll take and move said cube. We want these zeroed out, but under the model, just lay it flat on the grid, alongside the grid. So let me see if I can, one, choose this and move it out the way, just so you can. So half is on the grid, it's center, and half is, uh, we actually want it to be below the grid. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, this is the y-axis, so we can put it at uh, zero, negative 0.5. And as we can see, the very top is basically on the plane. It's right there. I don't think there's any space between it. I don't know. You know, there's no space. So first, so I'm going to make cool. this plane invisible. Um, 
um, so we can't see it, so it's out of our way. What's going to happen is we're going to want this to stand on the planes, like right at the top. See that? And its position isn't perfect as well. So we'll hit uh, zero that out. From there, we decide what kind of cube this is. It's going to be the red side cube. So we'll place our red side cube material on here. And now the entire thing is already covered. Okay. Now we want this to kind of be the front, um, the front cube, if you will. So it's going to be, it's going to be these sets of cubes, and this one can either stay the middle. I would like it to stay the middle, and then we'll adjust accordingly. Duplicate the cube, and we want because that way it already has the transformed position here. And we just want to move it over one space. Yellow is Y, red is X, blue is Z. So we hit one, and that has our position that we wanted to move like so. Duplicate this cube again. We'll move it again on the Z axis, and instead we'll go to negative one. Highlight all three by holding the shift button. We hit duplicate and now we want to move it along the X axis. So we do X, uh, I believe it's negative one and that will move it back. Duplicate what we have highlighted again, duplicate. And we'll move, it's already on the negative one position. So now we just go negative two. And there we have the grid set up like we want to on one side now typically uh in the game your character normally starts either directly in the middle or directly in the back um we're going to want to start our character directly in the middle so we're going to move like so it's best to do again another negative one right so it's right in the center when everything starts okay now we can also take connect them all to the center cube so parent them all to the center cube so that if we move the center cube uh, we move all of the cubes um, however you can decide which one you want to move um, yourself so we'll say three and we'll rename it to center cube you can also rename it from here so we'll do cube center right and from there we just center all the cubes or parent all the cubes to this one cube that way everything um, that is connected to this cube moves when this cube moves that and they're all parented so since this is the center cube when you select the center cube every other cube is going to move with that cube make it just makes life a little bit easier create a, another cube or the opposing side um, we can have it plus one on the x-axis after we do that we're then going to take and drag our blue material like so duplicate the cube so that one position is already taken care of. We're gonna move it on the Z axis. We can hit one, select all of these, the two, duplicate these, three along the X axis. We're gonna take all of these, find the center cube, blue center cube, parent it to that cube. So all of them have been parented accordingly. And this is pretty cool, this is pretty good. Now, next, they still need, uh, they have the cube mesh and they have mesh renderers. They also have box colliders, standard. Um, so really everything should already be set up the way you would need it to.